91 fax number 310-854-4455. Uh, Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist at Ona F with him. All right. That, <laughs> tonight, thank you for the courtesy laugh, gang. Tonight, the guest is uh, Sugar Ray. They're yeah, a yeah. Uh, yeah. relatively uh, new band out of... Uh, well, uh, where? Not Orange County? Well, yes, Orange County, but Newport Beach, California, we have to say. And, uh... Hello to everybody out there, by the way. Orange County uh, just seems to be going uh, through the roof lately with, Seattle. Uh, with bands. New Seattle. It is, isn't uh, it? Uh, yeah. And listen, if Drew knows enough to say <laughs> that, uh, it's huge. Right. Believe me. <laughs> so, yeah, I practically grew up in Orange County. He's still calling them uh, the Smashing Dumplings and Nervosa. So, uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, we have Craig, Rodney, and Mark here from uh, Sugar Ray, and then uh, Stan and Murphy will come in here later with the old uh, Love Line shift change. Yes. Right. Now, the name of the CD is Floored. It is out uh, not yet. June, June 24th it will be out. Right. So uh, relatively soon. But uh, Fly, the uh, single, is out. Yes. And, uh, for summer. Uh, we have been hearing that. And uh, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with Sugar Ray but know the song, we're going to play the song, and then for the rest of the show, you can go, oh, it's those guys who do that song. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That works. That works. I know radio. All right, uh, Engineer Mike, do you have uh, Fly queued up there? I guess that was a sign for yes. All right, so let's listen to Fly, and then we'll come back and uh, talk to the band. <laughs> that is Fly off of uh, Sugar Ray's uh, latest release, which is not released uh, just yet. It is the uh, second CD, and we'll be out on the uh, 24th, and uh, that is one of the songs that is on it. And then you guys uh, you guys got the Warp Tour coming up. That's well, let me give a couple of dates. Uh, Dragonfly out here in L.A., uh, June 25th, and then the um, San Diego. Where are you going to be in San Diego on the 26th? A place called Canes. It used to be an old chillers. Mission so Beach. Give you an idea what's happening over there. And where in Fullerton on the 27th? Club 369. And... The uh, Yes, I'm That's sorry. It. Go ahead. Mike. Then the warp tour yes. fires up. That's it. And do you know where you're going? You're doing about five weeks, you're saying, on that? Yeah, well, we're starting in Phoenix, and we're going through the Northwest, and we'll be going through Canada, and then ending up in uh, New York and New Jersey area. So we've got a good portion That's going to be fun. So you're, uh, how long does the tour go? I mean, it sounds like most of it. Are, it's are a you good part? There's another two and a half weeks to go through Florida and things like that. Yeah, the southern part that we're not going to do. No, it's you not don't need that. Exactly. Not during that time of the year. <laughs> no, <laughs> very uncomfortable. We've lived through that, <laughs> we lived through that once before. Yeah, so. yeah, you don't need that. No. All right. So the the <laughs> band is uh, basically been touring for the last uh, two years. Yes. Yeah. And uh, now you guys have settled in for more touring. That's correct. That's a we've, genius plan. We stopped to make a movie and then. Uh, oh yeah. 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 Just long enough to lay something out on some celluloid and then move yes. on. Now, Father's Day, as right. I recall. Oh, man. Incredible piece of cinema, so uh, you might want to get out there and see that one. I, uh, I did not see it. I don't know how I missed it. But <laughs> Going I, quick, though. Going quick. But I missed it. Uh, what is the part in the, in the movie? We play the band, believe oh, it or not. Really? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you're very rangy, you guys. Yes, we do. We have a, a wide range of acting abilities, something to fall back on in case this doesn't work. Heaven forbid that happens. Mm -hmm. But we play the band that the girl uh, falls in love with the lead singer, which would be me, which has <laughs> never happened. So it is definitely is fiction. And uh, she runs around, following us around a couple of gigs. And Robin Williams and Billy Crystal play the unknown parent or dad of this child. And they, right. you know, it's a bunch of uh, cavorting about and. It's not, it's not very good. Did so you get to uh, Did you get to hang out with those guys at all? Oh, we yeah. hung out big time. Like 14 nice hours, man. We also acted too with them a little bit. Really? So. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. It and was uh, they're decent guys. Very decent. They're funny. Incredible. I Rob Williams is on like 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? He's like, you know, you, it, it's insane. I I think he and I would kill him eventually. Yeah, he <laughs> never mean, stops. Ever stops. I didn't want to say that. I think he's Billy Crystal's a funny one. I, but as they're lowering his casket, you're going to hear him yep. doing, <laughs> exactly. doing like the Lawrence Welk shtick as the thing goes uh, down into the He's into always the looking to make somebody laugh, man. Exactly. It's like he, he gets the crowds around him and he just go, you know, starts it up. And it's like he, he needs that laugh to just go on. Drew, that. what is that? Why don't you tell us? Uh, uh, please, Drew, I'm not funny. He needs I'm just, attention, I'm man. just bitter. <laughs> Brad, 14, you're on Love Line with Sugar Ray. Hi, um... I just wanted to say, Adam, you're my idol, and I've even written out uh, a constitution for Boobville. <laughs> yeah. Boobville, the idea that never die. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Do you have it? Yeah. All right. All right. Now, hold on. Uh, Engineer Mike, do we have some sort of patriotic music we could uh, put underneath this? This is going to take like 45 minutes or so. <laughs> He's giving me the stretch. Uh, so, Brad. Yeah. What's your sign, man? My sign? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, you know, Pisces, Aries. I like a Virgo. I like a Virgo. Yeah, yeah. yeah I knew it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ever make me stall again, Engineer Mike. All right, Brad, go ahead. All right. 
We hold these boobs to be self-evident that all women were created to wear a size D. <laughs> <laughs> and when women refuse to reveal their precious gems, they shall be shunned. We shall worship the boob and take care of it. That way it can help us with our arousal. This is a testimony of our ways. Amen. Wow. <laughs> now, do you see what kids, even poor students like Brad, can do when they're sufficiently motivated? This is my point. This is what teachers should be trying to do. Boobville was an idea I uh, spat out my ass like a year ago, and then I forgot about it. But uh, people have not let me forget. And apparently there's a call for this place, this uh, utopia, <laughs> this place uh, where men are not judged uh, by uh, race or, or, or creed. What's the difference between queen, creed and race, uh, by the way? Go in the dictionary. All right. No. I don't got time for this. The point is, is where we can come together and, and, and worship a common boob without uh, fear of um, discrimination by the man. Am I right, Brad? Yeah. And... Um, you would like to be part of this utopia that I'm going to create in Plentywood, Montana. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you'll have a question. You'll be getting a map in the mail. Yes. He is the Thomas Jefferson. He really is. All right, um, Doctor Drew. Yeah. Uh, is it? I heard from one of my friends that if you don't, if you go too long without sex or masturbating, that you could possibly go sterile. Yes. No. No. It's just like a, something they say. It, it must be another a new urban myth. You, 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 it actually will reduce your sperm count and your testosterone levels. Or more, I should say, that the more you do that, the more that stuff tends to be enhanced uh, okay. to some extent. I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to leave them this unclear. I mean, if you if you masturbate a lot, your sperm count will go down. It will? Yeah. It and see, will? But but on the other hand, your but testosterone your, levels will go up and so it will repeat. Your comforter's it sperm will, count will go way that's up. That's right. It will repeat <laughs> more quickly. So if you wait a little while, it can be that's enhanced. Mine. So, uh, And in terms of going actually sterile, no. No. no but your but sex drive will go down if you, if you don't do it. And that's sort of why I think people have advocated no masturbation for kids. It helped contain the behaviors. Hmm. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, so what Drew is saying uh, to your... He's answering uh, you this way, Brad. Okay. Uh, if you don't use it, uh, it's going to go down because it would be a cruel joke for production to go up when you're not uh, letting off a little steam every once in a while. You would explode. Is, is that is that what God had in mind? Basically. Okay, now what about this uh, line about uh, advocating the teenagers well, don't I mean, masturbate? That, that I think that's where that sort of social moral came from, is that they, if they were... If they were taught not to do that, that it might contain their overall sort of sexual impulses. Right, right. And, and, and eventually they would explode. Then so. their impulse just becomes rape. It's yeah. not sex anymore. Oh. But, uh, no, this is what happens when you try to suppress uh, people's natural desires. You smack them on the hand with a cane each time they go for the groin. Uh, they stay away, but uh, then one day when you're not looking... <sighs> they're roughing up to defend it. That's right. They're up oh. in a McDonald's somewhere. Huh? <laughs> Tara. Uh, roughing up the defendant, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 17. Hi. Hey. Um, okay, I had this best guy friend, and um, one night we we always would get, like, hotel rooms and party, and it was always cool because, you know, he's my best friend. Well, one night I decided to try pot for the first time, and I thought it'd be cool, and I got real whacked out, and I, like, basically just crashed. And I woke up, and his hands were all over me, and I froze. I didn't know what to do. I just laid there, and I, I couldn't do anything. I, like, could barely breathe. I was so scared. And I just woke up the next morning. I mean, his hands were all over me and doing things you not even imagine. And I woke up the next morning and I just bolted off to work and didn't say anything. And I told my best girlfriend like two months later. And I think she told him now he's gone to the whole school and told him I'm a slut. And they shouldn't believe anything I say. And I'm this awful person. And I mm -hmm. need to know what to do. I'm ready to confront him. Best friend, Adam. He was my best friend. You know, I mean, we he knew everything about All right. Me. All right. So my theory on the best friend is uh, shoot them now before they shoot you or have sex with your uh, husband or wife-to-be. Apparently, don't be. Everybody we talk to as a best friend ends up getting screwed by the best friend at one time or another. You got to watch uh, the people closest to you, man. Always. You know. And just yeah. get rid of the best friends. Now that I'm an adult, I no longer have best friends. I have uh, a-holes I work with. <laughs> And, you know, people I see at the market, but I don't have best friends anymore, and uh, no long, no one ever screws me over. Right. It's right. Your be we sit here every night and hear about people whose best friend in the world just stole their boyfriend away or just spread this vicious rumor. Uh, this, uh, I'll never let my kids have best friends. Uh, Drew, I suggest you do the same. All right, so, uh, Tara. Yeah. 
Uh, so, for, Tara, first off, why did you freeze? Or, right, no, you you went to a motel and did drugs with this guy yeah, until you passed out. What's that all about? Uh, what's that all about? Because it was there was another girl who was always involved. We were the three musketeers. We were always together. And you know, the one night she didn't come, and it was you know I figured it was cool. You know, we had had sleepovers before. This also proves another thing you've said about people, male and females, having friendships. Yeah, it it, it never works. I well, it actually not. worked for him. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I guess not. Well, it's that oftentimes these things, these relationships generate out of somebody being attracted in some way. Yeah, and, and there's there's thereby somebody who is more attracted and somebody who's not into it. Right, and that's uh, how that's how males and females get together. And the way they become friends is when one or the other finds out that it's it just not never, happening. It's not happening. Right. But they go, oh, "What the hell? I like the person anyway." And maybe I'll get them loaded and get in their pants uh, sometime no later. The guy will hold on forever too. I had never seen right. that before. So. All right. So where was this third uh, musketeer? She Porthos. Had grounded, so she was at home. <laughs> All right. So, oh. and what what were we doing at a motel? Oh, I mean, it was just like you know you kind of like want to get away from home, so you just you know. It's, what, what do your parents think about that? Well, actually, I was kind of smiling at the front house. You know, it wasn't really. They didn't actually know where I was. Oh, so, wow. I mean, it's kind of like I have a really strict curfew with my parents, and it's just so lame. Because I am, I'm 17 years old, and I mean, it's, my curfew is 11, and it has been since I was 14 years old. It's Ooh. really pathetic, and I get straight A's in school. I'm, you know, I, there's no reason to have a curfew. But until, it doesn't you know. sound like it was so lame after all, does it? Oh, I true. Yeah. Nice, nice hey, one. Nice. Yeah, you live yeah, in their nice house. Yeah, you live in their house. You got to abide by their rules. I know, and... I know, but you know, it's like they won't even listen to me. And but I know. Look, it was but look what happened. Look at the consequences. You're yeah. the little angel. You know what I mean? Look what happened to you. So uh, and don't go maybe, up too fast because you're not missing out on anything right, right now. That's right. All Thank right. So uh, now that this is uh, behind you, you want to know what to do with this guy. Yeah. But I, here's the question: I'm What? Really tempted to find a shotgun, but all right. Uh, but you you couldn't move when this when you uh, awoke and this guy. I had his hands all over I you. Flipped out. I just, I but but this is this is not in a, a this is a little bit different situation than we normally hear about. This is somebody who is so involved as as a friend that she was blown away, See, I, yeah, violated, yeah. and embarrassed and frightened of, of exploding this relationship too. He's like twice my size. I was you know he, I mean he's probably he's six five probably. 300 pounds. Oh, I, Jesus. I, oh, this I, is I, a ball. This is, five, four, 105. this is the worst plan I've ever heard of. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get uh, Andre the Giant a <laughs> bag of spleef, and we're going to check into the High Home Motel for uh, a night of fun. Well, he was it's like my doctor. Way. He protected me. Uh, oh, he certainly did. He should have protected me. You know, all right, all right. Listen. I, I think you're going to have to chalk this thing up to experience, uh, unfortunately. I mean, it's too late to uh, bring charges up against him. And uh, no one's going to believe you anyway because you, 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 you told your folks a lie. You went to a motel. You smoked this belief. Uh, it, it's never going to work. It, it, was a, it was a bad idea. Uh, unfortunately, you got victimized. And uh, hopefully you can just get over it emotionally and move on. And as far as he goes, you just got to write him off. Let him say what he will. People, you know. Right. Don't worry about what people goes. say, man. I mean, that's how high school is. People that's talk. And, and and what you do is you end up keeping it alive by, by rebutting their editorial. Yeah, Just let them say it and they'll move on. That's the world, though, in high school. You know what I'm I saying? I know. It, you know what I, you, Like, we are older. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, it's like, hey, I, I'm with you. You know, that's rough. That's real rough. But... Right, I know. Because I'm sitting here, I'm like, just drop out and start a radio <laughs> show. And you guys are saying, just form a band and get right, out right. of there. It's easy. Cool. It happens for everybody. It's no problem. Yeah, but if she knows she didn't do it, she knows, you know, she... It's, it's all about what you know about yourself. If you're in high school, I was in high school, you're always worried about what people said and... You know, you just got to know oh. that you didn't do it. You didn't mean to get a guy a chance to do that. And, you know, he took advantage of you. Don't worry about him. He's a creep. I, okay. I know, I but we the real live story. in a society where people spend uh, millions of dollars a year trying to convince other people that they're this way or they're that way or they're not this way. There's publicists and spin doctors right. and advertising campaigns. I mean, think about what society is. It's all about trying to convince groups of people. Either vote for this guy or don't vote for that guy or buy this product or buy this CD or, or quit whatever. This guy. Quit this or do that. I mean, that's all it is. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and high school is a little microcosm of that. That's where it all starts. But I totally agree with Craig. You got to find some inner strength somewhere. And, uh, that's where it starts. Well, she's got straight A's. She sounds like she's good too. Yeah, so you'll be fine. Is, you know. yeah, she, she, her credibility away. will probably serve her well because in, in the long run, somebody's going to believe her and this whole thing could backfire on him. Right on. Bob. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Good, uh -huh. you're 24, you're on love line. Yeah, I've wait, hey, I've waited a long time to say this. Good evening, Shabba Ranks, how you doing? Uh, okay, what's up, Bob? 
You guys hip to that? Yeah, he's yeah good. Shabba he, Ranks is. I like him. He's nice. He's not here, but. Actually, <laughs> yeah. He's somewhere. Shabba Ranks isn't there? No, no, not tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a good thought, but though. It, but it went over really well, though. Yeah. yeah it's, people are dying in here. Oh. Well. Ah, ah. This guy is uh, an asshole. True. Please, let him finish. <laughs> what is he talking about? Who said that? Bob. Sorry, I thought I was saying I had to Shabba Ranks. Who's that? I don't know. Uh, Bob, hey. do you have a question? Yeah. Who's Shabba Ranks? He's a dance hall guy. He's a Jamaican dance hall artist. We have Supercat on the song. Oh, oh he, right. He so, did the, yeah. I had a question. See, he's, <laughs> he, he is a voice of the band, and there's not a voice in the studio right now. Exactly. Okay. It's not Shabba Ranks. It's the infamous Supercat. I wasn't dissing anybody. I just thought I was saying hi to Shabba Ranks. Huh? Well, that's okay, because we're Sugar Ray from Newport Beach. Oh, Sugar Ray. Right on. Cool. Really? Yeah, that. <laughs> uh oh. This guy's an Onwards. Uh, go ahead, Bob. I recently got myself into a uh, relationship with a with a girl who's uh I don't know, I, I guess a bit more experienced than, than I am and she she's able to, to uh I don't know, I guess endure longer than, than I am. Uh she's like into a kind of marathon length uh, endurance whereas uh I don't know. 12 minutes isn't exactly uh, satisfying this woman, and I was wondering if there's anything that, like, uh, physically, uh, if I change uh, the habits as far as exercising or diet or anything like that, that I can do. It's funny because his his, uh, his sex is a lickety split, but his storytelling is uh, <laughs> slow as molasses. Well, you know what? That one comes real, that one's real close to home for me because I share a similar problem this guy does. Um, you know, do, you know what you do? You have to do the thing you don't want to do, and that's oh, how no. you... I've, I've done you know what I'm talking no about. You gotta put you know, it in work. Dude. That's how you prolong you it. You talking about oral pleasure? You know what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. You gotta do what yeah. you don't want to do that you, obviously you haven't been doing, and it's something I've learned because you know I we actually had a song about in our last record, and uh, I'm very vocal about it. But you can make it happen. You can have a good relationship. I've made it happen multiple, but I'm well, sure but here's I can the, tell by your enthusiasm for the question. Here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> well, substitute to to the actual preference. It, it takes like full body coordination, and I get confused. And absolutely. All right, now hold on. Uh, what Mark is saying is the uh, sexual timer starts as soon as you get down there. That's correct. So, uh, if you're only good for 12 minutes, uh, like Bob is... Uh, it, like I am, too. You stay down there for uh, 48 minutes, and you've made it an hour. Right. right. Exactly. You recite the alphabet, you do what you got to do. You it's do what you got to do, right. And, and I think that's what Bob... Bob, uh, get down there and tell one of your long-winded stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We will uh, show a climax in O.N. All right. Act like Shabba Ranks down there, man. We'll be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just try not to use the word ranks down there, though. Oh, yeah, that, that, that might can, not get you. That gets you like a shin in the nuts. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll be back with Sugar Ray after this. Uh, with, uh, I don't know if it's Eddie. It wasn't Eddie or Frank. It, it wasn't was, one of the brothers, yeah. And it, wasn't, it wasn't one of the Casillas brothers. Right. It was one of the, uh, it was a guy at the end. I can't remember his damn name, but uh, I don't know if you guys have heard uh, the show, but uh, when we gamble on uh, people's uh, past, and uh, it's the whole uh, you know set up with uh -huh. okay, Sharon's fifteen, and she's uh, pulling a train with her uncle as a caboose, and uh, <laughs> oh. what, what could have possibly happened to her as a youngster that would have caused this? Um, oh, very well, uh, Larry from the uh, uh, Voodoo Glow Skulls. What do you think? What happened in her past? Uh, Bad hair day. Uh, Larry, um, <clears throat> we're looking toward her past. I think she just needs to chill. <laughs> like, uh, oh, that was advice. All right. Uh, oh, remember, like, I, get, yeah, I, had, I think yeah. I had to give him multiple choice. Yeah. I had to yell at him. <laughs> just take dad was an alcoholic. It's easy. All right. Uh, we're here with Sugar Ray. Uh, the CD is floored. It is out the 24th, so don't look for it just yet. But you may want to head out to the stores around the 21st, 22nd, <laughs> just to get a space in line. Just camp out. It's like a Star Wars movie. Exactly. Craig, Rodney, and Mark are here, and uh, Stan and Murphy will be in uh, at a uh, later time because we're doing the old uh, round robin here. When we have a band with uh, more than three guys or so in it, we'll uh, do it uh, in shifts. Lisa, 18, you're on Love Line with Sugar Ray. Um, yeah, I have, a qu I have a question about schizophrenia. Okay. Okay, um, I started, um, doing, um, I started smoking weed when I was 14. Uh-huh. And I don't know if that caused schizophrenia or not, but I started smoking that and I drank a lot. And then when I, on my, um, on my 17th birthday, I finally started doing speed. And when I started doing speed, the night I did it, <laughs> I almost got raped and stuff, right? And, um, 
stop. Are you, are you doing speed regularly now? No, I'm not doing it anymore. When did you stop? Huh, um, like right after that. Like in, Which was um, how long ago? Like September of 96. Okay. Okay, and um, when, um, and when I was doing it, though, when I first did it that night, I should have realized something because I started, because um, after the guy tr tried to rape me, I, 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 and I'm not imagining it because I, I know because I was sober, you uh -huh. know? I had just taken it, right? He tried. All right. Hello? We're here. Okay, and um, he had just, and I... Okay. And I, and All right. <laughs> what, what's your question for us? Okay, now, um, after I, and, and after I started doing that, I started hearing, like, hearing voices, like, and, um... What were the voices saying? Take off your pants? No, no. come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they said a guy was in there trying to rape her. What, what were the voices saying? Um, like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna get inside of you, and... All the stuff. Uh -huh. That's what the voices were talking about. So they were about. attacking. They were persecuting you. Yeah, like they wanted to come inside of me, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And um, they and I still sometimes hear it. I mean, I hear it a lot. And I went to the doctor and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it gave me placebo pills or what, because I still kind of heard the voices and stuff. What was the medication they gave you? Cogentin. Uh, we gave you something else with the cogentin. Yeah. What did he give you? Um, I'm not sure. Some other pill that he said would put me. Haldol, like, Navain. Yeah, Haldol. Haldol. Okay. Okay, and um, but I still kind of heard them. Uh huh. And I told him, and I told him, um. And I, and I lied to him, and I told him I didn't hear the voice. Was it a psychiatrist you saw? Yeah, it, and, a, and a psychologist, because uh, all the stuff that happened to me, oh, they thought I should see a psychologist. Why'd Good. you lie to him and say you didn't hear the voices anymore? I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. All right, well... Because you wanted to be better? Yeah, I Didn't want so. to take any more medications? Yeah. Schizophrenia shows up, like, in what, early 20s? Early uh, 20s, yeah. Oh, really? Good. What do we need you for? But, but this this could be a lot of different things. I mean, all we can say is that she's had a psychotic episode, and it's been around drug use. I, I would wonder more if you have something like bipolar illness, manic depression. Does anybody in your family have manic depression? Yeah, my mom. Okay, and it tends to go she in families. Been, she hasn't been, like... I, I understand, please. It tends to go in families, and uh, th that will be a more common cause of the kind of thing you're describing and certainly, and certainly the way I'm experiencing you now as you it, talk. It doesn't seem like your limited drug use uh, well, has done but, this. But that's the other thing is that if you are bipolar drug use of this quality would bring on the bipolar illness more intensely. It would. Speed is yeah. the root of all evil. Yeah. Oh, so, yes. so Lisa, go, the, the good news about bipolar illness is that it is quite manageable with medication. Get back to the doctors, tell them what's really going on and I think you'll need to be on a different combination of medications. There's medicines called mood stabilizing medication that uh, usually actually are anti-seizure medications that doctors are using a lot of. All right, but go days. back and talk to They're the quite uh, good. psychiatrist. And you should be able to be stabilized to the point you don't have these symptoms. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Hey, 21, you're on Love Line with Sugar Ray. Hey, how's it going? What's up, dude? What's up? Oh, okay, I have a little problem. There's this um, girl, and um, see, I really liked her a lot, and she's, like, really scared of men now. And... Um, I got really tired of like being patient and everything, you know, with her and trying to help her. And I kind of gave her an ultimatum. I says like I told her either she has to choose between all or nothing. What does that mean? Oh, what? Um, oh, what are you talking like, about? Trying to get something like started with me or something, you know? Right. You were just sort of being like casually dating. You wanted to be more serious. Well, yeah, out? not even so much even casual dating. I mean, I was just being her friend and everything. I mean, I told her I liked her and everything. All right, so what did she say? Um, see, she's had a lot of bad experiences with men. Oh, she okay. Really hates men. What did she say? Um, well, see, I guess, to be completely truthful, uh, she's been, like, raped and everything. Oh, uh, I'm going to ask the question a fourth time. What okay. did she say when you gave her an ultimatum? Uh, she basically said that I was turning out just to be like um, the men that she's been with. Just Call their ass. a selfish no, jerk. Okay. Josh, uh, you are uh, begging for a uh, ride on the Hindenburg. <laughs> that is basically what Josh is doing. Yeah, I think Josh is like uh, pleading with the captain just before he took off to that, uh, the, wherever it blew up in Indiana or think, wherever I that was. He was probably guiding it towards that uh, yeah, dirigible pole. That that's got it. The Hindenburg blew up on me, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Josh, I, I, you know, people who've been raped and people who've had a hard time in life uh, need boyfriends, too. But um, they need smart old ones that have money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't need young stone ones uh, ah. who are borrowing their parents' dart to, uh, to get to the liquor store. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Josh, this is, this is trouble. You will have your hands full with this woman. But, I mean, and she's kind of trying to tell you that. 
But, well, one thing is, I mean, it's a little bit different than that, though, is she's told me she's really wanted to try this with me, but, but she's really scared. And um, after, you know, after I told her that, after I gave her it, you know, the next night I, was, I just felt like a self, selfish jerk. And I called her and I just told her I was really sorry for everything I said to her about that because I really wanted to be there for her. And um, she's kind of accepted my apology, but you can tell she's really hesitant, hesitant around me. Well, she's real skittish around guys because she's yeah. been victimized by guys. Right. All right. right. Don't you think it would just be like sort of a natural progression, Josh? You know, I mean, giving her ultimatum seems kind of like, like she said, like just the rest of the dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, just see how it progresses, man. If you can't handle that, then back off. But like, giving her an ultimatum is kind of rough, bro. I, yeah. I, uh, I totally agree with Mark because... She has uh, been forced. Uh, 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 guys' right. wills forced upon her. It's like forcing her again. She's and, rented and, that and now it, it may not be a physical thing now, but it's an emotional thing. We're trying to corner her again. It's an intrusion. Right. Well, thank you, Drew. Well, maybe you should be here. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, 20. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Drew, Drew is like a uh, thesaurus. Uh, whatever you come up with, he comes up with a better word. He's like your favorite uncle, you know? Yeah. The, the one you want, uh, want to die so you can inherit his farm. <laughs> oh. Okay, he doesn't have a farm. Michelle, Come on, please. What's up? Hello? Michelle? Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Okay, I have a question. My, um, my boyfriend's 24 and I'm 20, and um, I have, like, every symptom of genital warts possible. Genital warts have no symptoms. Well, that I can, like, see it on the bottom. You see warts? Yeah. Uh, then they have warts. They're there. Okay. But my question is, is are they... Always sexually transmitted, or is there another way you can get no, it? No, they're always. They're what? L let's say always. Always, and yeah. how long can you have them for? I'm for, trying to like forever. believe. Forever. See, I could have gotten them like two or three years ago and yes. not noticed it before. Technically, yeah, sure. you'll still have them after you die, won't you, Drew? Uh, I mean, for for a period. Yeah, that's that's until I'm you decompose. For two years, and I'm just hoping that I'm just noticing it now. That that's I'm it's that very common for there to be a, quite a lag between contracting it and actually seeing the warts. And actually seeing it, and what are like, um, what can happen afterwards? Is there any like? Anything bad that can happen to me, like not having kids or things like that? Cervical cancer. Cervical cancer? Right, so you have to go get regular pap smears. And, okay. And sometimes a couple times a year, and you have to get colposcopies. Like is, is, should I do this as soon as possible? Yeah, if you yeah. don't get regular pap smears, um, absolutely. Okay. And Michelle, then it should be controlled also. They should be treated because they do tend to proliferate and spread. Uh, there's not any clear evidence that uh, treating them does anything to the cancer risk, and it's only certain subtypes that actually increase the risk. So uh -huh. it may amount to nothing. It may it may be something you need to just keep more careful screening because of. And um, will a condom help my boyfriend from not getting them as well? Or have, have you been having sex without a condom? Yeah. Then he already has them. Then he already has them for yeah. sure. Well, Ooh, basically, okay. basically. <laughs> I mean, a yes, yes. Good wearing looking condom, out. <laughs> if he doesn't get them, can uh, perhaps decrease it's the probability they will. But it, but it's it's usually the case that you you contract them. Okay. All right. Thank you. There, he's committed now. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. They yeah. weren't. They won't hurt him though. Next time uh, you're you're out, uh, stop into Planned Parenthood and pick up the uh, pamphlet. Uh, so you've got a vagina. And and read it thoroughly, uh, would you please? Oh what oh. not to do with it? But the, the well, words, she, I never met a woman who knew less about her her own parts. The words rough. only hurt the men, and that they are contagious to women. No, they just don't go. Away. They look real good too. Yeah, it's <laughs> very attractive. <laughs> well, if you could get them to follow some pattern, you know, like an arrow or you know the Big Dipper, you know, so your tattoos or something, your initials right? or something. Yeah, yeah, then you could see where they'd have some sort of aesthetic purpose. But they're so randomly placed. I mean, not that I'd know. That's not fair. I've heard Drew talk. Here's love line before. We finally figured him out. And now we remember. Drew and I, uh, our Drew and I's favorite uh, game is uh, when producer Ann says, "Like, uh, who'd you guys have on the TV show last weekend, or or who uh, who was our guest on Monday?" And we go, uh, uh, <laughs> "Let's see." We only remember, Donuts. but you know what? We remember the people that canceled from five years ago. <laughs> right, right. Uh, some some uh, some chick who's on a show that you never heard of that you can't even remember her name. Well, we know the people that canceled, uh, but uh, Julio Iglesias uh, could have been here uh, the day the day before, and we'd have no idea. <laughs> I don't know why I used him as an example because Drew loves Julio. That's well, we why. can't wait to be in that sort of forget category. Or you certainly will uh, tonight. <laughs> our uh, guest is uh, where's that CD, Drew? Wow, <laughs> uh, oh, forgot. Sugar man. Ray is here. Yeah, not yes. the boxer. Craig, Rodney, and Mark. Where'd you get the name, uh, by the way? Well, I'm a huge boxing fan. So. Oh, you are? Naturally, the, the origin and the ending starts there.
you know. Well, you can't uh, you can't go wrong. I mean, you got uh, you got the Sugar Ray and you got the Sugar Ray Leonard. You Sugar Ray Leonard, yeah. You know, it's a piece of Americana too. That's how we looked at it. So Sugar Ray, you know. Yeah, I'll go for that. All Except right. for uh, Camacho. Oh, I know no, we don't want to bring that, that up. But, uh, uh, if, if this was the '70s, it would be a different story. Uh, well, I'll, I abso in the past, right? absolutely. Right. Camacho would have been 11, and he could have killed him. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wade, 17. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, what's up, what's up Wade? Hey, uh, yeah, I just want to. I had a question for Sugar Ray. What's up, what's man? man? So, yeah, that, that would be you guys. Um, I was wondering if uh, on the song "Drive By," if that's Ricky Rackman. Uh, no, no, it's not Ricky Rackman. Sounds like him. It does, doesn't it? Cause it's the whininess of his voice, <laughs> I think. But uh, actually, that's actually Murphy, our bass player, and myself going through the routine. We've yeah, all been myself. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fast food, homie. Hey, wait, where are you calling from? Uh, Sacramento. Right on, man. Cool. Yeah, I saw you guys uh, a couple months ago, I think it was. At the, uh, what do they call it? The Cattle Club? They call it something else now. The uh, Bojangles, yeah. Uh, the Bojangles. Are you, are you guys going to get uh, back through Sacramento, you think, with the Warp Tour? Yes, I'm sure yes. we are. Uh -huh. We'll see you there. In that area somewhere. Wait, didn't I talk to you that night? Uh, maybe. Yo, I talked to one of you guys, a couple of you. So I really made an impression like? on you then, I think. What's that? <laughs> I really made an impression on you then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. We're all the same. You know. Wade. Wade. That's a killer show, though, guys. Thank, Thank you, man. Appreciate radical, it. Man. Yeah, and I hope to see you guys soon again, too. Soon you there. will. You will. Well, the Warp Tour will go through there. Actually, it's only come in uh, to Tahoe and San Francisco. Uh, get in your moped and drive there. Please. Please. Come on, Wade. Hop Put on you on the, the list, bro. All right. <laughs> all right, man. All right, Wade. All right. Okay. He was just kidding about the list thing. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, come on. You know you're kidding. Ashley, 14. Huh? <laughs> He's getting married tonight, so uh, don't bring him up. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, hey, Ashley, Ashley, what's happening? Um, I just wanted to tell you I love you guys so much. Thank you. Who else are that? Who? Huh? Huh? Right. I can't hear you guys. Do you love us all? Oh yeah. Okay. Good. You guys are so cool. But my well, should Ray or Doctor Drew? She knows Adam. Adam. Huh? All right, hold on. No, nobody speak for a second. Uh, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Uh, who do you love, Sugar Ray or the show currently known as Loveline? Everybody. Yeah, oh. all, right. all right. All right, but then you love nobody. <laughs> That's what I say. Too vague. It's insurance. All right, Ashley. Okay, I have two things. Um, I have a problem and I have a question. One, the question is, I was wondering if you could play the Dr. Drew Shuffle. Yeah, we can. And my problem is, is that, um... Hold on a second. Do you want to hear the Dr. Drew boogie no, or the Dr. It. Drew shuffle? Huh? Do you want to hear the, the Dr. Drew boogie or the Dr. Drew shuffle? The new what? one or the old one? I don't know. I've just heard the shuffle, I think. Uh, so you don't know that there's a new and an old? Uh-uh. Okay. Well, we'll hear the new one right when you're done, But so go ahead. Okay. Well, my problem is, is that um, ever since I was, like, 11, um, I would, like, go over to friends' houses and, you know, we'd, like like party and stuff and we'd like drink um lots and um it used to be like something social and then it became like something for myself because, for, because why um just because i liked it okay is there and, alcoholism in your family yeah okay so you probably have that and also um i mean i would do it a lot and then it would lead to other things, like I'd be drunk and I'd do drugs. Okay. And, um... This, this is sort of a typical story, so, Ashley, you know, yeah, it's, it's good that you're able to identify this as a problem. Yeah, and then it, and then when I would mix things together, mm -hmm. I'd get myself in even more trouble with, like, guys and stuff. Sure. And stuff would happen between me and them. I understand that's part of the disease, though, is that uh, consequences develop, and yet yeah. in spite of those consequences, you keep using. Yeah. Who, but, who in your uh, family is an alcoholic? Huh? Who in your family is an alcoholic? Both of my parents. Are they using presently or are they... My uh, mom is. And your dad's in recovery? Well, he... He's, he's, like, they he's got, in Ohio. He's just not using. Well, they got divorced yeah. and he, like, became really, um, religious. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if, um, like, this is just a phase... No, uh, unfortunately, actually, no. The, this thing—it's the uh, pre-hobo uh, phase, is what you're in right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, but you can really get going. Yeah, that's the phase. It's the uh, it's the uh, pre uh, out on the street uh, talking to yourself, um, um, flies uh, buzzing around you, um, shaking down. Uh, <laughs> at, at your age, <laughs> scared white uh, people for money. There can be really some substantial 
neurologic or neuropsychiatric consequences. And this is a progressive disease. There may be a period of times when you get this under control, but to be this into it at this age um, has a pretty serious prognosis. All right, so the it, good news is you're identifying it as a problem. And you're getting, you're getting it pretty early. Getting it? Yeah, I mean, it's coming on pretty well, You're identifying it. Right. I mean, most yeah. people are in pretty heavy denial until right. their fifth divorce right, and right, their right. tenth DUI. Right. Okay, so uh, Ashley should go to where? Is there, is there, um, I don't know what I'm thinking. Well, there is, is there AA for yeah, TA? The, the, uh, well, the, teenagers of the are alcoholic. Thing, it's, it's, it's difficult for somebody this age to do the recovery work. that Because they can't uh, smoke and drink all that coffee. <laughs> it's not that so much. It is, the, it is the quality of work that needs to be done. It's difficult for an adolescent to do. But there are adolescent programs out there that sort of help them with those sort right, of issues. So where should she go? Uh, really, she should go to a psychiatrist. Yeah, but she's not going to just... What's she going to do? Just pick up the phone and, uh, you know, uh, ask uh, Commissioner Gordon to put her in touch with a psychiatrist? She, she, you could call AA and see if there are any teen groups available, that sort of thing. Uh, so call AA. Call AA. They'll be in the phone book just under Alcoholics Anonymous. Give them a call. Tell them what the situation is, and they will usually have a referral for you. And where would they be? Toward the front of the phone book? Uh, I guess with okay. A. Yeah. All right, just checking the math. All right, uh, and uh, for Ashley, uh, because uh, because of overwhelming demand, do you have uh, the Dr. Drew boogie? Well, here we go. She drinks until she barely has her senses about her, and then she can relax enough to have sex with me. Dr. Drew is right. Ow! Get down, get down. Asshole. Get down. Find you have sex with me. Gee, it hurts. Me. Have sex with me. Faggot better have sex with me. Now I want to have sex with me. I was bored, so I had my tongue pierced. I was bored, so I put a spear to my penis. Tried to be straight, or I thought I should be straight, and I was confused. You know, he on this makes me sick. It hurts when I urinate. It makes me sick. The anal sex makes me sick. This guy's penis makes me sick. I've had anal sex. Gee, it hurts. I've got these lesions. G it hurts. I'm still a virgin. G it hurts. It's called intimacy. Can I say that? Ow! You're fat. Ow! Gay. Ow! Confused. Ow! Sick. Ow! Boring. Ow! Still a virgin. Ow! Dysfunctional. Ow! Can I say that? Dr. Drew is right. Oh, that, that is sick. Oh, that is awesome. the sickest thing I've ever heard, man. <laughs> that, uh, I need that. I need that, that, that on the, wax. Dude. The Dr. Drew boogie. And uh, maybe later on tonight, if you guys behave, we'll uh, play the Dr. Drew shuffle. Okay. Uh, Can it beat the boogie? <laughs> uh, it is the predecessor. It is the old school, uh, Dr. Okay. Drew. Right. But uh, sick, still, it's got a lot of flav. <laughs> vor. Are vor. you down with the flav? Vor. <laughs> uh, a lot of vor. A lot of flavor. Oh, a lot of flavor. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Uh, give Give us just a Give us just a couple. Uh, DJ uh, Engineer Mike. My lover likes me a lot, but sometimes I'm scared because he's very active. He gives me oral sex. I just give him the hand. The penis is very dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to groom this child for his, uh, you know, abuse farm. <laughs> I love the groom for the abuse so farm. Like I've been there. Uh, <laughs> you guys been to the abuse farm? Like, <laughs> it's great. Oh, if I javelin find practice. You stealing my underwear again? Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> this is not acceptable. Michelle, 26. You're on with Sugar Ray. Hey, Sugar Ray. This is Michelle and Jay calling. How are you doing, Rodney Martin? What's up, Michelle? What's up, girlfriend? <laughs> My God. What's hey. happening? How you doing? Doing thing. So, K-Rock paint playing Sugar Ray now, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... Uh, Finally. You know, dream come right. true. How's your job going? <laughs> awesome. Radical. And your parents and other things people would like to hear about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> who, who are you, Michelle? Um, I went to the same high school as Rodney, or no, as Mark and Stan. And I, me, and me. Yes. I bet you wish you'd had sex with them now, don't you? Oh, well, so, well, well I'd have to bet. Newport Harbor or Corona Del Mar? Oh, Corona Del Mar, Corona. of course. Of course. Yes, uh, right go on. fighting urchins. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the name We're the, the sea kings. Oh, sea kings. Sea. I knew it had sea something to do with the ocean. Come on. Of course it did. All right. Better than the crabs. Michelle's getting married. We got rid of those. Oh, really? She's getting married to Jane. I'm getting married to Jay in four months. Well, yes. Congratulations, you guys. Oh, thank you. Where are you guys registered at? <laughs> <laughs> A little joke. Everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Michelle, are you going to go out and see them uh, in San Diego or perhaps Fullerton or perhaps the Dragonfly coming up here? Of course. Every show they play, I am there. You rule, Michelle. All right. We love you guys. You rule. Thanks for calling. Talk to you soon. Have a good, good luck. Bye, hey, uh, call us when the marriage goes bad.
Oh, no, it won't. Uh, <laughs> hey, you hey, I, I bet it will, yeah, because, yeah, it might. But the guy's a good kid, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying call us after the divorce. I'm just saying if there's some trouble, a lot of relationships we, experience We'd be glad that, to help out. And yeah. call up. Well, we, this is the place. We there's a show ahead. rolling. Absolutely. Drew, uh, sell the hell out of the next call, please. Yep. We're, we're still waiting to see what comes up here. Oh, yeah. it's uh, potluck night. Yeah. <laughs> well, please, Drew, try to make something out of it, would you? To say, we have the uh, calls in there yet. Yeah. No, no, but make it, it, you see, instead of selling it like uh, all we have is crampy calls and no, no good calls No, we don't have any online, calls yet. Sell it, like, like empty. sell it like uh, <laughs> there's so much to choose from, uh, I, I don't even I don't even know where to begin. Oh, I see. You see? All uh, right. Uh, Drew, sell the hell on the next uh, call. You know, there are just so many just <laughs> tremendous questions here. I'm going to have to sit down and study them very carefully before I choose the one I want okay. to put up next. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, the name of the show is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew, the board's certified physician and the addiction medicine specialist. Uh, Stan and Murphy are now here from Sugar Ray. We will hear something else off of uh, the upcoming CD Floored. Oh, Mark's coming in. Well, come back in, Mark. Come Have a on seat. back Hi, there, Mark. kitty O. Uh, Floored will be out on the uh, 24th, which is uh, just, uh, what is that, in a couple of weeks? Three, uh, it's two a Tuesday. Half weeks? When the kids are out of school. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, yes. Good timing. Yeah. Good timing. Picking them up in the van. <laughs> if I hear, I know we're getting to the point where uh, graduation for high school is coming up and Father's Day is coming up. But I, I, Father's Day. I swear to God, if I hear dads and grads uh, tossed around this yeah, year, so I'm going to kill somebody. That's sort of the Hallmark uh, uh, motto, isn't it? Dads and grads. Yeah, grads. I, 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 I just say uh, um, grads and dads this year. <laughs> I, that would uh, that would suffice. <laughs> All right, so we're going to hear uh, something called RPM coming up in uh, just a few moments. But uh, first, it is back to the phones. We go, uh, David, 14. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um. Well, first of all, before I get to my question, I was just listening to that uh, girl who said that the guy had taken advantage of her. And I'm just thinking, us males are like the assholes of the human race. You know, Whoa. I mean, you never hear a woman. <laughs> well, uh, it's... Uh, guys taking advantage... Uh, 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 you never hear a woman taking advantage of another guy. It's well, her fantasy, that's why. <laughs> you never hear a guy complaining about it. <laughs> that's right. Uh, uh, that's for sure. But uh, listen, uh, there's only, you know, two genders. So um, it was a 50-50 chance that we'd be the a-holes anyway, <laughs> David. So. Might as well just enjoy it. Well, we got the good part of it. Now, my question is, and I called up with this question a few nights ago, and I got disconnected before I could ask the question. Okay. I think you passed off as a bogus call. All right. But my question was... We'll listen tonight. Go ahead. And this question is main... Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Bye-bye. <laughs> just, uh, just, oh, no. just, just having a little fun with young David. Uh, what is the question, David? Okay, my question is mainly for you, Drew. Yeah. Um, if, God forbid, I were to get a cut on the penis and then use a condom... Are there any lubricants out there that if they came in contact... What do you think, Drew? That's an interesting question. Uh, I, I, it's I all that water-soluble stuff, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's it's all stuff that's I, meant... I can't think of anything. Don't you think if you're using a condom at all on any sort of open sore, you got a problem? Because if that should happen, I don't want, like, gangrene of the urethra or something. No, but, uh, you know, yeah. that, that's not the way people typically get more serious infections of the soft tissue of that area. It has nothing to do with that. David, you're a virgin, right? Uh, actually, no. Really? <laughs> Who'd you have sex with? I actually, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> she's from Canada and Hawaii one year. Remember that? <laughs> what, uh, there, what, oh, were you in uh, Cuba during the 50s and had a few highballs at the roulette table? Uh, you're 14, David. <laughs> please. Uh, you remember. I had sex, Adam, and then I woke up. All right. You I didn't have you. sex. And you, you may be a while, David. Dude, I was 17 and a half. Let me tell you something, Adam. I'm so desperate, I'm about to turn gay here, man. <laughs> yeah! Yes. When I was young, I used to have imaginary friends, and they wouldn't even play with me. Uh, you're gay. <laughs> done, done. Hey, David will be here all week. Uh, try the veal, David. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you, you want to do a little more? Well. Uh, yeah. dude, give, us, uh, give us the A material, though, because we're running light. <laughs> Well, Ad well, Adam, let me tell you one thing. If I could masturbate as much as you, I'd consider myself God. <laughs> well, all right. Well, uh, I admire you great. Uh, amateur night at the... Uh, <laughs> Jamie Farr is bringing out the gong. The, uh, oh, he'll be here all week. Uh, hey, now. The uh, picture of uh, Buster Keaton is lit up, and that means uh, it is time to get off the stage. Did you know that? Is when that what I, they when do? I used to do open, comedy store, when right? I used to do open mics, right? When I used to do open mics, uh, they would tell you, listen... 
you got three minutes. And I'm going to hit you with the flashlight at two and a half minutes. Right. And that don't mean shine it on him. I mean, the guy literally come up and hit you with it. No, oh I, I will be in the back of the room. <laughs> now you know why that career didn't work. But the guy would get in the back of the room, and he would flash you a flashlight at two He'd and a half you? minutes. And... Uh, it's a rough racket. Right, listen, you, at least you can play music. <laughs> and he would shine that thing on you, and you had to finish up uh, to your best, uh, for me, it was like best fart joke, uh, before <laughs> you had to, uh, were scurried off stage. So it's a uh, it's a rough life. What the hell was that, Engineer Mike? I didn't have any jokes. That's why I went up there and asked everyone where they're from. Alex, 22. Alex? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm there. I'm yeah. Sorry. What's your question? Uh... Well, the situation is I've been living with my girlfriend for um, about two years now. Uh, we moved out when she got pregnant. By you? Yeah, okay. yeah, by me. Well, I'm, I mean, uh, my daughter looks a lot like me, but that's really what my question is. Um, she, she and I were having some problems in our relationship because my mom really hated her. And um, why did your mom hate her? Well, because she knew about her past. And you what's, know, what's wrong with her past? Uh, drug use and promiscuity and running around. Just, I mean, you know, the whole thing. Standard uh, suburban. High well, I mean, this is Manteca. You know, I don't know if you know anything about Manteca, but. I love Washington. Huh? Where's Manteca? <laughs> it's in uh, <laughs> between Tracy, Stockton, and Modesto. Right smack dab. Oh, really? Teslaville. What a cruel <laughs> joke, because it, it really sounds like a place Jimmy Buffett would be hanging out. It turns out to be a vacant lot. <laughs> so there's not so many cheeseburgers in paradise. Well, they say it means lard in Spanish, but anyway. Um, the, my, my question, you know, let me, let me first tell you a little bit more about it. Um, she, uh, I found out a couple, like, three months ago that she, that she cheated on me. Uh, back then, um, at, at that time, because um, she came to me telling me um, that she had kissed some guy, and, and it, you know, I said, well, okay, I'm glad you told me, and, and, you know, was a little suspicious, but that was it, and then, like, a week later, um, I asked a friend of hers, you know, if she had said anything to her about it, and uh, she said, well, she said she did more than that, and she found out more, and, you know, it developed into where, um, you know, I finally sat down with her, and told her we need to seriously talk, and I talked to her, and um, you know played it played it off like I knew more than I did, and uh, she ended up telling me you know basically everything that happened. Um, I mean, obviously not everything, you know, not the gory details. And all right, stuff, all right. But, so, uh, what's your question for us tonight, <laughs> Alex? Well, my question is um, not only that, but I found I found, uh, right. found out about um, the it's Quaalude night here on uh, <laughs> Love Line. Whoops! Oh, he's been hurt by love. I know he's uh. talking. I know, but sometimes it's, that kiss can send you to the clinic, Alex. I know, but, they, you know but it's like everyone had to suck off the ether rag before they uh, called in. <laughs> what? All right, uh, we'll we'll get back to Alex. Sugar sure. A night. I just run, just wanted to uh, chastise him a little bit, <laughs> Alex. Yeah. All right. So, what is the question, please? Well, the question is, I found some crank about a month and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoops. Okay. Okay. We got to do it tonight. We've got what? Yeah. Right? Please get into it. Okay. We got a seventeen-month-old daughter, and I'm just wondering whether it's worth continuing the relationship for for the sake of our daughter's safety and for the sake of my own sanity. Um, if she doesn't get some kind of treatment, this isn't going to change. You're not going to be able to fix her. You're not going to be able to require her to straighten up. This is going to go on. Okay? The drug use is going to go on, and well, the uh, acting out is going to go on. Okay, because, I mean, I've been told that, you know, some people say, you know, cycles are just going to repeat themselves. That's correct. Just she was obviously abused when she was younger in some fashion. Uh, that's a good guess, because she yeah, was. Yeah, and the people that are abused, this is how they behave in their relationships as they as they grow up. And, All right. And she's also an addict. You put those two things together, and you have... Well, see, that's the thing. I don't think she's an addict, because she only displayed that kind of characteristics. I mean, you know, because I've never done drugs before myself. Is one, was one of her parents an alcoholic or an addict? Well... <laughs> Her father left before she was, well, when... Was he one of the parents an alcoholic or an addict? Both of them, yeah. Okay, and so right. she's, so she, all right, so <laughs> she's, an, yeah, she's an addict, okay? You got a kid, dude, she's an addict. She's right? an addict, and she has been abused, and this is, this is a, you know, the serious form of, of, uh, 
uh, psychological disorders. And all right, but here's here's where all the emphasis has to be shifted toward the child. Yeah. And so but, that she does not go out on autopilot uh, like but, your your wife or girlfriend or whatever she but concubine. The child, the child may be uh, first of all, he may uh, the child may be a point of leverage that can require you to get your girlfriend into some kind of treatment where perhaps something can be. Uh, done about all this uh the child in the meantime should be under your supervision it sounds like and you're going to have to you're going to have to bring reality to bear in a very 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 uh, sort of a militant way all right and alex don't just sit back and wait for uh things to unfurl because uh by the time you get off your ass the kid's going to be 14 in uh, in juvenile hall right. you know yeah. what i mean get right. involved uh, take some stands you're the dad for christ's sake i don't care what your emotional state is or what you are chronologically once you pop out a kid you're papa but i'll tell you what alex that's, that's it and you have to start acting like papa where, where papa attention. here is really screwed growing up, though, is that you can tell he's just like being warm and fuzzy with her. Oh, let's talk about it. Let's think about it. That's BS. That will do nothing. That will do absolutely nothing Give her, except give her a free license to continue acting out. He must create consequences, and they must be brought to bear. And, and for, for him to be able to do that, he's probably going to need to go to some Al-Anon meeting, something like that. Yvonne, 16, you're on Loveline with Sugar Ray. Hey, Yvonne. Hello. Oh, hi. I'm sorry. No problem. Okay. Hi, Dr. Drew. I'm um, uh-huh. Adam. I love you guys. You guys are gods. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> well, which one of us would be a higher form of god <laughs> at this point? I don't know. I'd have to say both of you are pretty fresh. Oh, really? <laughs> Sugar Ray, hi. Greetings, oh, Hello. Yvonne. I haven't really heard your music, but I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> Same with us. Well, you can well, listen to 106.7. If, <laughs> okay, if, if you keep listening, in about five minutes, we're going to play a song called RPM. Ooh, Whoa. I'm excited. <laughs> What's your question, Giddy? You sound very (laughs) enthusiastic. (laughs) My question, well, um, I smoked opium about a week and a half ago. And um, I don't know, some strange things have been happening since then. Um, I've been feeling really strange. I don't know. I don't know if it's from that or what. Describe how you're feeling. Um, Almost afraid, almost like... Anxious? Mm, yeah, almost. Um, Anxious to smoke more opium? No, 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 no. I'm just kind of freaked <laughs> out. That's actually a good question. Are you are you feeling uh, sort of a craving for the drug? No, not at all. You're I just see. feeling extra anxious. Extra anxious. Um, the little things have been freaking me out. Like, mm-hmm. um, uh, I've been listening to a lot of the Beatles lately, and um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So did yeah. Charles yeah. Manson, right? Which yeah. record? <laughs> Um, White Album. Oh, okay. Uh, little piggies. Was there anything besides <laughs> opium you were using? Um, no, just uh, um, <laughs> a lot of marijuana. <laughs> uh, hearing uh, the sitar is not, <laughs> it's not uh, good aye, when, aye, you're, aye, when you're aye, chosen aye, for the opium. Aye, aye, aye. It's not good. No. Like Love and Rockets. I, I love it. Even, even Yvonne, as complimentary as she was, did you smoke anything besides opium? No. But <laughs> marijuana. Just a little. Just a little. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right, uh, all right Yvonne. Yeah. Uh, maybe drugs don't agree with you, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. Well, it could, it could be some delayed opiate withdrawal symptoms. It would be very peculiar that you would get withdrawal symptoms after just one evening of use. It could be related to the pot or perhaps something in the pot. I don't know what else you've been using out there, but this is not something that's likely to persist if it is indeed just from the opiates. Esther, 24, you're on Love Lime with Sugar Ray. Hi, what's going on? What's hey, up, baby? Esther. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a boyfriend that I've been um, living with uh, for over three years. Um, I'm 24. He's 58. Um, Whoa! My, can stop my there. Is, um, well, he was he he was a <laughs> a, a, a spry 55 when they met. So, uh, is his name Tony Curtis? Let's be let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Walk around the wind up beanie and uh, sugar. So I had to go for it. But Woo. we've um, we've been good sexually throughout our entire relationship. But my question to you, Doctor Drew, is. This past year or so, uh, he's been, like, um, enjoying himself a little bit more quicker than I have. Um, you know, yeah. All right. He knows that he's got one foot in the grave. You know <laughs> Armageddon is coming for this guy. <laughs> There's no what? time for a foreplay. i got to get down. I only have so many left. Well, the foreplay is fine. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I've exhausted just about every every one of my, uh, you know, alternatives on on how we can delay this, uh, this uh, you know. Uh, so climate. is he having a premature thing? Oh, he's definitely premature, and, and that's that's what I'm concerned about. And it just you know, just this past year, it's been going on, and I, I'm not sure if it's you know because maybe it's his his age, he's getting older, or maybe it's just our relationship. We're at a level where we're just uh, you know changing sexually in our relationship, I, and I don't know what else to do. Yeah, but he was going through the change that you're going through sexually <laughs> in 1952. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Esther, you got to understand. 
Well, I, it, it, I don't how's know. It, how's this bowel control? Is that fine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's great. Depends. Uh, okay. I mean, as, other, than, other than some gray hair, he doesn't. Uh, he oh, doesn't God. Didn't want to hear that. But, uh, but I just wondered, though, what can we do? What do you think? Is it a prostate thing, Drew? What do you think? No. I, I, you know, I, I don't think there's a simple answer to this. How was he before? Oh, he was great before. That's what I'm saying. It and how long did, did and it just happen suddenly? Yeah, well, just during this past year, so maybe since Halloween or so. I, when I but did it become this way suddenly, or did it gradually develop into this? It was gradual, very gradual, and and, and that's what. Is he on any medications? Just high blood pressure med- medication. It could be the high blood pressure medicines. Have those been Have those been changed? No. You no. sure? He's been on them for like 15 years, as far as I know. How did you meet this guy? Oh, I moved up to San Francisco a few years ago from Phoenix, and uh, we worked together for for quite a while, and uh, mm. we, and uh, that's how we got together. Uh, like I said, Whoa. you know, I had to fill a month for his sugar before I decided to take a plunge. And believe me, you know, the first <laughs> people to say that you know he's he's you know such an old crow, but uh, right on, but I was just wondering. I mean, could I try some kind of things that I could find at an adult bookstore, or should I try some <laughs> some toys, or, or what should I do to? <laughs> well, you could uh, try having sex with the guy behind the counter at the adult bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe the, beforehand, uh, before I go see the, you. There are not any I, easy magic answers. For yeah, this, so. I mean, you know, we we always hear about this. Uh, you know, how to jumpstart your sex life, and you know, you've been married for twenty years. You both hate each other's guts, but if you put on this uh, this uh, nighty that you're way too fat to squeeze into, <laughs> and make him, uh, you know, a highball and be waiting for him at the door, <laughs> he, his libido is going to come flying out like uh, so much magma or lagma or magma. <laughs> magma. The point is this. Uh, Guys start settling in uh, sexually in a relationship at some point. There is sort of the settle-in point. It's like when you meet the guy, it's like one of those snow globes that's just been shaken in a uh, paint-stirring machine, and things are flying everywhere. (laughs) And then eventually, I don't care how great the sex was or how great the woman looks or how sweet she is, it starts settling. They uh, calm down. Down to the bottom. And women are always looking for ways to sort of kickstart things, but it's really there's really no outfit you can get or perfume you can buy. It's just more about communicating and seeing if you can't reach a compromise. And uh, a lot of times, too, what happens is, is the guy backs off a little. The women get insecure and they start riding the guy a little. And then he really shuts down and he wants right. to just hang out and watch TV and he doesn't want to deal okay. yeah. with it. No one likes that pressure. <clears throat> yeah. Take it slow. Give him a lot of what he likes. Stop and, uh, reading Cosmo. Right. And, I mean, and there, there are some pretty complex psychological reasons that people get these sorts of things. I, I'm not sure that it's worthwhile getting into all that and you usually have your usual advice don't you uh for the premature problem yeah. uh the uh uh the poster of the Hey Vern guy at the uh, foot of the bed, which is going to add at least 15 minutes. And if, and if that speeds you up, you need, you need counsel. Yeah. Years. Or prison. And he may want to remove a uh, bullet from the chamber, so I like to say, before he goes into battle so that the gun does not go off uh, prematurely. But then it doesn't shoot as well. I know. It's not quite as accurate. You know what I mean? You'll get that, like, this wasn't that good thing happening. Yeah, that's true. But you you got to let a tracer go out of the barrel just so you can see where the other round's right, going. Yeah, yeah. you got to Except the anti-fire. Right. All right. I have no idea what we're talking about anymore, but I'm getting an erection. I feel like Elvis in the 70s years. RPM (laughs) is the name of the song off of Floored, which is uh, the uh, CD from Sugar Ray that's coming out on the 24th, and it goes a little something like this. RPM off of Floored, out the 24th from Sugar Ray. Hello. Hey. Hello, people. Quite a departure from Fly, but uh, nothing wrong with showing the band's range I'm here sorry. on Love Line. We have range. And uh, when we come back, we will uh, discuss Sugar Ray's uh, range and uh, my, ra- my ranginess. Dr. All after this. He left. Speaking of Dr. Drew. Hey, Drew! ¿Dónde está la Drew? Mr. Drew. He's hey, on uh, El Computer. Drew is at the... Stan Murphy and Mark are here from Sugar Ray. And Hel- look who is graced the Love Line Studios. Hello. His presence. It is Dr. Sugar Drew. Ray. Thank you, Adam. I have some level of commitment. Whoa. Whoa. Everything on the computer. Whoa. Right. Commitment. Whoa. Go for yours. What are we doing on the computer, seriously? Chat, chat room. Really? Internet. Mm-hmm. I don't believe you. Uh, and? Cyber sex. Why is he smoking right now? Do we have a chat room? Would they yeah, we have one going right now. Oh, really? All right. All right, I have no uh, snappy retort. I'm ready to move <laughs> on with the show. Uh, they're not all gems. Uh, Sugar Ray's here. Floored is the name of the CD. Out the 24th. Ouch! And it's back to the phones we go. Erica, 15, you're on Love Line. Hi. Um, I got a question for Sugar Ray. What's up, Erica? Hello, Erica. Um, on your 
our album Lemonade and Brownies, mm-hmm. the I guess hidden track. Does that have a name? Yes, it does. Yes, it's it called does. One Great Cowboy, and it goes out to all those great vets who served to us throughout the years during the. Uh, yes. One Great Cowboy. What I about that? The, that is the name of the first CD uh, you guys came out with. I mean, not uh, One Great Cowboy. No, but, Lemonade and Brownies right. is the name of it, and uh, One Great Cowboy is the name of the hidden track. Hidden track, hidden track, hidden track. Hey, Erica. Track. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Detroit. That's the Detroit Rock City, Rock man. City. What's happening? Do you know Ted Nugent? <laughs> what? Ted remember. Nugent, he's the Motor City Madman. Do you oh, know him? Crazy as hell. Right on. <laughs> right on. I shoot Buffalo. Shot Erica's dog with a crossbow. I like <laughs> <laughs> um, I wrote you guys a letter a while back. We got it. Back. Oh, yeah. We got it. Yeah, we did too. We're sending you back a letter now. You didn't get the sticker in the form letter? <laughs> I never got anything. That's a little rough. <laughs> You'll get something real soon, though. I promise you, Erica. That's a management thing. All right, Erica. Mm. Thank you. All hey, right. Take care, Take love. care. Bye bye now. Uh, oh, Tom, 24, you're on with Sugar Ray. Hey, guys, uh, how's it going? Tom, what's up, dude? How you doing? Greetings. Um, well, I've got, first of all, I've got one question. Um, do you guys know when and if you guys will uh, ever, um, this is for Adam and Drew, uh, whether you guys will ever be in, uh, be broadcast in Madison, Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> will it be broadcast there? Yeah. Where, where are we? In, we're in with lacrosse or something like that right now. Where is that? I love that sport. No time to bring a sports trip. Is that near Madison? Uh, yes, that is. And so but, we are uh, there. Probably not. It's uh, probably about an hour and a half away. Where probably. do you pick us up at? Well, right now I'm in Las Vegas. Oh, I this see. This is a long story, but, but um, you know, I'm from Madison. And and what are you doing in Las Vegas? Well, I'm uh, actually I'm doing some work out in the desert. So. What, what kind of work? Uh, research. Bearing Jimmy Hoffa. What kind of research? Uh, <laughs> working, uh, studying climbing and... Um, You're a geologist? ...affecting um, nesting habits of certain birds. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. I think I've done that, too. You're an ecologist? What's that? Are you an ecologist, or what are, what's your... Um, well, I'm a psychologist. Or a urologist. Really? <laughs> You're a pet psychologist? <laughs> hey, Ventura? Uh, my hamster's really in a downward spiral. <laughs> <laughs> well, can can, can you get him a table at the Mirage, please? He makes it halfway through the habit trail, then he starts blaming his parents. <laughs> <laughs> he to come out to L.A. You know, there's probably a booming business for that. Ooh. There. Ooh. Really, Ooh. I, I know with all the uh, rich, <laughs> stupid celebrities in L.A., you could uh, have a thriving uh, pet psychology business. Excellent. All right, so are you sure you just didn't uh, get hold of some bad peyote and you lost? <laughs> or, or are you actually studying birds? No, I'm actually studying birds, actually. That's but right, mate. Back to Madison, Wisconsin, as it's uh, getting rather warm out here. Well, we would love to be on in uh, Madison. And uh, if any uh, if any powers that be, uh, and if the mayor of Wisconsin is uh, listening and um, can uh, put put together some sort of... Uh, put the governor. Uh, yeah, put the governor. Is there a mayor? Governor. No, it's the mayor of Madison mayor and the governor of uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Exactly. Um, I actually do have a legitimate question here. Um, I'm also a diabetic. I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic. Uh-huh. And I am curious as to what type of effect um, that may have on my sexual functioning, like if I have to um, worry about anything in particular in the future, in the near future, or in the distant future. How is your blood sugar control? Uh, it has its good days and it has its bad days. I say I'm probably averaging right around close to 200. That's not good. No. Do you have 200 what? That's, that's his blood sugar. Milligram, milligram per cent. It's, yeah. it's, a re, it's a measure of blood sugar. It should be in the 80 to 140 range, right? Right. And uh, how much ins- are you on twice a day insulin? What's that? Are you on twice a day insulin? Uh, yes. How many, what, what kind of insulin are you on? Uh, N and regular. Both. Yes. Do you take a third shot in the middle of the day ever? Um, no. I usually take one um, about 7 a.m. and one at about 5, between 5 and 6 o'clock in the evening. And you give both NPH and regular each time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, have you ever been seen by a diabetologist? No, I have not. Okay. Um, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the complications of diabetes are directly related to the lack of control. Right. And there was the tighter your control, the less likely you are to have complications. Okay. Do you have any complications so far? No. Your kidney um, function's okay, your eyes are okay, no neuropathy, anything like that? No, no, okay. everything's been fine. Hold then, on. Drew, are you a real doctor or just a love doctor? Right. <laughs> just a love doctor right. <laughs> oh, I hate when people ask you that. You hate that. That makes me nuts. Okay. Do you really practice medicine? <laughs> um, 
the deal here, though, is that your blood sugar is inadequately controlled, particularly for somebody your age. And if you were to go, if you were to go the next ten years with glycemic control like that, you're going to start getting complications. Okay. And for young males, the only way I generally am able to get their attention is by reporting to them that the first thing to go is going to be their sexual functioning. That is a very delicate function, neurovascular function that does go rather quickly. Uh, diabetics com males commonly get sexual dysfunctions. Okay. Uh, so it is something that should motivate you. Now here, let me put him. Cool. Head, he can well, hear you. Well, the, the good news is that <laughs> if, if the if the use of insulin okay. and the regular blood sugar testing is something that's difficult for you, there's a new medicine that just came out a couple of weeks ago called Resulin uh, that is extremely good for for uh, use by people with insulin in terms of decreasing. Their now, what is insulin? I mean, what is it uh, comprised of? It's insulin. It's a it's a peptide. It's a, it's a, it's oh, a so, uh, it's hold a, on, it's folks. A it's a peptide. That's what my Hershey father called me. Insulin. Vitamin oh, that's e. insulin. Get a little peptide. Uh, well, it comes out of your pancreas and it goes in your system. Oh, I don't want to hear that. And and pancreas. all right, but when when you're diabetic, your blood sugar is too high. You could because you don't produce with a, an insulin dependent juvenile diabetic. It's usually because some some part of the immune system we believe attacks the islet cells which produce the insulin, knocks them out, and so there's no more insulin being produced. So you have to give the insulin to replace it. Okay, and insulin is the body's own, and don't say insulin, I'll, go, so I'll hit you with this <laughs> mic today. It, it, it is, it is so sort good. of the, mm, how can you describe it, the... Oh, this is awesome radio. Yeah, no, the, the mod, the, the control of, of, your, of your carbohydrate metabolism. Oh, okay. sort of the, the throttle right. of all that. I, I went down a dark path. Uh, but think, look, talk, I, for Tom, he needs to see a diabetologist, so he sees an expert, so he can get much tighter glycemic control. And remember, there is this new medication now called Resulin that I've had some tremendous results with in terms of improving glycemic control for people that have had difficulty. Okay, Kim, 21, you're on Love Line. Hi, um, just have a question. Hey, Kim. Uh, yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um... I am 21, and I've been married for two years. My husband is really great. I love him to death. We have a three-month-old daughter. And ever since before we even got married, I have had um, a desire to be intimate with other men. <laughs> I, haven't <Whoa>. acted, <laughs> I haven't acted on it as of yet. But let, me, let me make sure I'm clear on this. When did you start going out with your husband? Um, How old were you? I was 18. Mm -hmm. When you started going out, oh, I was 17, mm -hmm. yeah. you were seventeen. When you started going. Out. You got married when you were nineteen. Yes. Had you experienced other men before that? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Like how many? Oh, huh. well, let's just say I can count on both hands and a foot. That maybe yeah. not, maybe right. not enough. I'm not racket. proud of it. I'm just saying. I think it's the nature of the beast okay. right here. Right, does, yeah. does the hand smell funny? <laughs> what, is, what do you no. think set you off the smell? Uh, behaving like that at that age? Um. Promise you? No, I don't know. Do we want to gamble? Sure. Oh, yes. Okay. This is a uh, an opportunity to gamble. All right. Kim is 21. Uh, Kim has had uh, 15 or uh, possibly less uh, partners. Well, somewhere between 10 and 15, right? Because if she needed to add the foot into the both hand equation, she may not have totally tapped out the foot, but we know it's more than two hands. And it certainly can't be more than uh, all the digits combined of 15. This is still good radio. <laughs> no, and like your insulin speech was uh, getting us rating. You got me there. All right. The point is, is this. Uh, now she wants to act out again. Right. What is causing her to uh, want to do this? Uh, what happened in her past, their childhood? Let's all get a dollar out, please. All right. Including all right. the band. Honesty. <laughs> Oh. True. No, I'm not Come on, go. seriously, Come on. man. After hey. all the money you've taken from me, are, are, you, are you doing that for me, Mark? I yes, made I so much money. You need hey. one? Yeah, I do. That's, and Adam, you and I'd, I got I'd like too. to see the little table dance when this thing's over. That's yeah, my dollar. Don't worry. It'll end up You're back not wearing in those shorts, shorts for nothing, are you? <laughs> All, right. All right, we got five big ones here. All right. uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll give ourselves a little time uh, to uh, figure this one out. This is uh, Kim, and when we come back, we will uh, gamble with Sugar Ray. Wait a minute, what happened uh, to Kim? Did Kim hang up? Kim split. She split. Hey, she Kim, split. like Jamie Walter said, hold on. <laughs> Come on now, girl. Oh, Don't Jerry, leave us, Kim. Did you hang up on Kim? They split like mods what? and no. They jammed. split like mods and jammed. How you doing, McGee? Good to see you tonight. They okay. gotta, they've got to listen to the show. What happened? Oh, they hung up on her? Oh. oh. Rob Hillis. Oh. Call back. Call back. Is, and we thought we were Randy doing bad radio before. Jesus. All right. Lord. When we come back, uh, we will regroup with Sugar Ray. Thank you. All of my most sensitive areas were inflamed. Really? Love.
Helpline will be right back to deal with inflamed sensitive areas. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. The band is Sugar Ray. The, uh, CD, hey, what's up? CD is floored. Out the uh, 24th. All right. What happened is is um, uh, the lovely uh, phone screener, Sherry, uh, by mistake, uh, hung up on uh, the gal uh, we were going to gamble on <sighs> because uh, we had put her on hold and it looked like we were done with her. And um, sometimes the sound isn't up loud enough in the room. Uh, all right, but that's all right. Nine, right. We will learn. Uh, we will live to gamble again, uh, possibly on uh, Kristen seventeen. Hi, um, I kind of have a problem. That's kind of my problem, and I have a question about my sister. All right, what's that's your so problem? Do I. Okay, my problem is is that I have like a heightened reaction to like any kind of drugs, and I was just wondering if that's maybe there's a reason physically for it or anything. Give me an example of what kind of reaction you have. Um, well, it takes me maybe like two hits off of a cigarette to get buzzed. Yeah. And maybe like a shot or two of something like tequila to um, get pretty buzzed hard off of that. Are you are you um, intoxicated? You f- you have difficulty ambulating that sort of thing. Do you fall? Do I fall? In other words, is is it a mo- are you not just high, but are you also motor intoxicated? Are you uh, unbalanced? That sort of thing. Not really, kind of. Okay. How much you weigh? Right. That's the next question. I weigh. How much you bench? Sixty. I'm like six foot. I'm like 60 tall. Six foot tall, 160. Yeah. And a, a shot of tequila knocks you uh, <laughs> under the coffee table. I think I can beat her. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're just... Some, some people are resistant. Uh, some people are resistant to the intoxicating effect of drugs, and some people are very sensitive. That's just the way it is. And in fact, one of the markers for alcoholism is whether you are relatively resistant to the intoxicating effects of alcohol. So you can pretty much rest assured that you're not alcoholic. Okay, cool. Um, my question is, is um, my mom thinks that there's a possibility that my sister might have been molested by my dad's um, father, my grandpa. Why does she think that? Um, my sister, um, a couple of years ago, woke up in the middle of the night when we were visiting them in Ohio, like outside of um, the garage, just kind of staring at the garage. And we had been sleeping downstairs, and the only way she could have gotten out without waking up the whole household, basically, was to go out the sliding glass door. And it was, like, um, closed and kind of locked with a board, so there's really no way she could have gotten outside. My mom thinks something might have happened, and she might have just blocked it out of her memory. That's like a Fox Mulder thing. So, <laughs> that's a weird... Well, wait a minute. She couldn't have gotten outside unless she'd, uh, like, uh, given Grandpa a hand job or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't, I don't There's understand. There's no other the, way outside. The connection here. There's really no other way outside unless she opened the garage door, which would have woken up everybody. But then, what does your grandpa have to do? If there's no way outside, what does grandpa have to do with... Yeah, leave him be, Jesus. With that. There's no way outside. <laughs> well, the, um... The motor home, when we woke up the next morning and we told my grandparents about it, the motor home had been opened. Like oh, someone had been in it the night before. Oh, man. But we just don't know how she got out and how the door got locked behind her after she got out. And why, why, why does, does grandpa that solve implicate that? grandfather? Yeah. He's watching Hogan Heroes trying to go to sleep. And he's getting all of a sudden he's molested. <laughs> I don't know. My mom. Leave him alone. He, he, he did his work. He's probably a, vet, he's probably a vet and all that kind of stuff. Leave him alone. Grandpa's cool. I was just wondering if there's, like, any signs or anything. Uh, how old is she? Um, she's 15. Being, being outdoors uh, is not an indication that you've been <laughs> molested, uh, by the way. Even even in parts of Ohio. Yeah, it, not even in a 38 special concert. <laughs> if she, she's it, got it, an infogram. It, it's very hard to pick up these sorts of things, uh, particularly after a single episode. But it, you know, any kind of mood liability, any sort of night terrors, any kind of chaos in her relationships would be a sign that something might be up. Drug use, truancy, grades falling off, mood disturbances. That, that's a sign. And uh, how about being um, in front of a garage? Is there anything to that? Not that I'm aware. Did you guys, did anyone understand uh, her story whatsoever? Not really. Who am no. I talking to? Let's go. Uh, Kim, 21. <laughs> this is Kim. Hey. Oh, Kim. Hi, Kim. How are you she doing? Back. Kim, what's up? Hey. All right, uh, Kim. Mm-hmm. She found her way back. You had uh, 13 partners. Uh, something like that. Whoops. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not, that's now 15. Squared. Because I believe one of your one of your feet has an extra digit. <laughs> All right, so you have you've had fifteen partners uh, before the age of uh, seventeen, then got hooked up uh, yeah. with the guy you you decided to marry, mm-hmm. Fabio. I didn't start getting sexually active until I was fifteen, and this has been until I got married. So I was nineteen at the time. Oh, were you even when you're with the you're you're so you're cheating while you were uh, dating or and engaged. No, I wasn't cheating. Brad, come on, tell it to us. You met the guy tell at me. seventeen, did you not? <laughs> Uh, around that time, yeah. So I think be- I know this chick. We were friends. No, you don't. All right, you met him at 17. Mm-hmm. When did you begin dating him? Um, 
off and on during the time, but we didn't get engaged until about six months before we got married. Why right, so quick? So you did, you screwed around uh, off and on uh, before you got engaged, uh -huh. but after you'd met him and began dating. Correct. And when you got engaged, you stopped that. Right. And why, why such a quick engagement? And um, Well, we'd been dating and been talking about it and just decided that we'd do it. How old right. is he? He's um, going to be 24. Okay, now you're, uh, you're getting that itch again. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on a second. All right, now we can begin the gambling. Okay. The uh, money is out on the table. My money, what age? Uh, who do we want? Who wants to start? Me, I do. I oh, do. okay. Mark, go ahead. My guess is that it's a certain like a family tree interaction thing when there was a Thanksgiving or a Christmas. Now I could go as deep as like a second cousin or an uncle, but someone played around, thought you know, look, was looking for grass in the valley. Maybe someone went pee pee when they shouldn't have been, and. Uh, you know, not maybe not so directly close to the family, but uh, there's something nutty happening there within the family. All tree. right, so you will go with um, someone inside of the immediate family uh, trying to get inside of um, her, but not necessarily the the primary factors in the immediate family. Maybe uh, the funny, freaky cousin just back in from the navy. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll go for that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hank, the Bozeman's uh, mate. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Who's uh, the guy fresh in from Desert Storm who wasn't very, really in there. Very creative. In on leave. All right, I like that. Uh, Stan, uh, would you like uh, to go? My, my direct guess is probably one of the primal inmates at, that you see at the zoo. I, I don't know. Some, uh, like a chimpanzee hop the fence and try hump their leg uh, uh, during a field trip? Perhaps it was the uh, family cat or some kind of like uh, neighborhood dog. I don't know. You gotta love that though, because you put a buck in for that guest. So, yeah. thanks, Dan. Yeah, that's how much a dollar means <laughs> well, to listen, me. Well, listen, why don't you just, t why don't you go with uh, Dad was an alcoholic? Um, it's a very safe one. I'll take that for uh, 7000 please. Okay. Stan's going with alcohol. Murphy. The unstable family, she needs to find something and settle down. So, just moving around too much and, you know, she wanted to settle down and just have a family or whatever, be married. She and wanted, she she want wanted to park her cousin. I yeah. can't follow that. Yeah. It, what, what in the past happened to her, Murph? What in the past? Just uh, bad hair day. Exactly. <laughs> bad hair day. <laughs> Don't make fun of the band. Just, yeah. <laughs> just chill. Oh, hey. All right. Uh, hey, just broken family, and she wanted to have family. something. Broken family. All right. Uh, she wanted to have something right. solid, so chaos, she got married too early. Chaos in the family. Yeah. Okay. So uh, parents Parents were divorced uh, before what age? Um, 11. 12. 12? Yeah. Uh, it was the dad. Yeah, that's easy, though. I mean, but okay. All right. All right. Before, let's make it nine. Nine's good. Okay. Parents divorced before nine. nine. Drew. You don't go? Oh, go ahead. I'll go last. Uh, Where's your money, baby? I'd say it's in there. Dad uh, <laughs> uh, over-idealized uh, Kim, and uh, they had it was sort of an enmeshed relationship that kind of became weird. Somehow either Dad left or Dad became too touchy with her. Probably, he said touchy. Dad probably an alcoholic and sort of uh, part of that helped fuel the impropriety of his, of his behavior. He violated her in some way. All right, so Dad uh, dad touched her. Yeah, or something. <laughs> I am going to go with uh, neighbor or somebody on the block, uh, like brother's friend, uh, got hold of her I was dad, had, I, I, dad was an alcoholic. At a young age, all right? We dad all, drank. We all have the bets in, and it's uh, now uh, back to young Kim. Here we go. Kim. Kim, what is the actual answer to your past? The actual answer, my parents were divorced before I was six. And um, dad is totally fine, not an alcoholic, didn't touch me, didn't do anything. Damn. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. But it really hurts. Lost a buck. Yeah. Very important here. And so just my parents were divorced, my dad didn't live with us, and that's about it. He, yeah. he didn't idealize you when you were a little kid? Not as far as I know. But who, and Dave Del Dotto gets the money. Family. But who got you, though? Nobody. How about uh, Weird Uncle Lou? Um, he never <laughs> nope. did anything? Not until my first boyfriend. And what about the um, what about the uh, the slow kid that lived down the street? Uh, <laughs> who, uh, the short bus guy, you know, with, with the orthopedic kid. shoe. <laughs> with, yes, with one leg shorter the than the Dancy other. Tom field goal kicker. You know the guy, the freaky foot. <laughs> he never he never got to you. <laughs> there was never any kind of uh, molestation or anything. No. What were you looking for in all these? Uh, all right, hold on. Do we have to give the money to Murphy? So far, no. Wait, wait, there's wait, not wait. enough disclosure here. Wait, wait. Uh, it, what, what was it you were going for in these relationships? What were you responding to? Carnal pleasure, I guess. No. Oh, Wrong. It's not no. a Van Halen record. No. <laughs> that's Who carnal, do you live with after your parents divorced? That's my friend. Colonel, Colonel. Who did your parents live with after you divorced? Pardon? Who did your parents live with after you divorced? Michael Oh, I lived with my mom. And was there a stepdad on the scene? No. 
And no boyfriends or anything like that? Mm -mm. When did you lose your virginity? 15, she said. Oh, what was your relationship like with your dad after he left? I never really saw him. It's just now starting to get to the point where we're talking again, pretty much. And you, don't, you didn't experience that as a violation any time. Ah, uh, true. true. Maybe this is basically horny. We'll, we'll, like give, I said. we'll give him the money, but, but, no, I want but the this money. is... This is more, uh, Kim is, is a million miles away from her feelings. A million miles. It's not miles. the plimsolls just talking. Uh, <laughs> and and you, you didn't experience your father's departure as any kind of uh, dis anything disturbing to you? Um, I'm, just gonna, I'm just now getting into that, yeah. But at the time, it was kind of, yeah, he's never there, but that's how life is. Yeah, which, which, is, which is denying your feelings altogether. Right, which but, is, is just, when they submerge and they come out when you're an adolescent, you start acting them out. All right, but, uh, I mean, we don't have enough time to uh, sort out uh, Kim's entire life, but the point is, is she, you have issues here, Kim. <laughs> big, big. Big issues, issues, issues uh, that you're not uh, in touch with, because uh, it's like the story we're getting from, from you is not gelling uh, with the actions of your life. You know what I mean? It doesn't really add up. We're well, it, all sitting here a little up. confused. It does add and, uh, up. Murphy's laughing all the way to the bank. Well, who gets the money? It, Murphy, Murphy does. Murphy does. It does. It does. It's it five bucks. Up. They He's, laughed at me, now I go to the bank. That's it, one round of it a It does drink. add up, but your denial about the feelings is what... You guys, maybe she's just horny. Why can't that be possible? Well, I am, and my priest, my men, priest men will are, touch me once. Men behave <laughs> that way, and women typically routinely don't. And it's, our society is telling women they should. And that's but just I'm not the, playing with guys, Dr. Drew. They, I'm playing with women, the so they've got to be out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Society's telling me I should take this $5 women. from Murphy. Plenty of women out there who do act out sexually. It's a very Easy common thing. But they do it in the context of believing that's going to gratify them because society says it's okay for men, therefore it's okay for women. But for women, that ends up being a very painful and ungratifying way yeah. of acting. All right, let's take uh, last quick question uh, for Sugar Ray. Zach, 17. Hey, Zach? how you guys doing? What's hey, up, Zach? Zach? What's Zach up? Zach De La Rocha, Ray Jenkins Machine. What's up, man? Dude, I saw you guys in Sacramento. You guys rocked. Dude, no way, dude. You rocked. You were the guy with the G-string, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I so saw good. you there. I saw both your plums hanging out. You're right. gnarly, dude. No, I was with that fat chick that you pulled up on stage. Well, You're damn right. We all were. banged. Boy, I couldn't believe what I felt underneath her skirt. That was Mark that did that. That was cool. Zach, you rule, man. What's happening out there in Sac? Dude, what are you guys coming back? When are you guys going to keep your basketball team up there? My God, everybody's bailing out there. Dude, they suck. Come on, Mitch Redmond, dude. you got to love him. The Warp Tour will be up there, near there. Yeah, they'll be in uh, Frisco and where else? Well, the Warp Tour will be Let's in Tahoe and San Diego. Frisco, man. Tahoe. So you can take it. It's close it. enough. All right, and what were those little metal things that he had on his guitar? Those were dimes, dude. Don't tell the government. Okay. <laughs> All right, Zach. Thanks. Hey, Zach, what's your sex problem? Screw Zach. we got to go to a break. <laughs> Zach screwed. will tell you a sex problem when he catches you on the Warp Tour. And I can't wait. Meanwhile, as the love line, and uh, mercifully, it is over. Michael Penn, tomorrow night. Uh, a guy whose music I enjoy and uh, would like to talk to. So, what if he uh, was Romeo in black jeans, Adam? We will. Uh, uh, that whole March uh, album was a great album, as uh, far as I'm concerned. Uh, Sugar that, Ray, Kay. thank you very much. The name of the CD thank you. is uh, Floored. Woo! We will go out with a little uh, something off of Floored, which is out on the uh, 24th of this month. Uh, this may sound familiar. A little stand and deliver. Remember and this? Uh, Thanks for having us, man. Our pleasure, guys. Sugar Ray. Thank right. you. Cheers. Until next time, it's Adam Crawl for Dr. Drew saying mahalo.